Wood is harder than steak. Fact. Steel is harder than wood. Fact. Glass is harder than steel. Fact. But steel cuts glass. The body of the glass cutter will look like a pistol for no uh, real reason other than it looks fancy. The tip of the cutter will be swivable, which will make sense in a second. Engraving is inevitable, so that's also going to happen. A little screw to hold it all together. And then a little suction cup, so we can do the circle turny kind of thing if you wish. But we can also use it as a, just a normal glass cutter, hopefully, if it works. Since I have no idea how actual glass cutters work, I bought a real one just to see what I'm up for and uh, how I can make my own. I've decided to start with the tip of the glass cutter as it is the most complex. Well, at least it has the most amount of tiny parts. So I want to make sure that it actually works before we go ahead and uh, make the entire thing and uh, spend millions of hours making some pieces of garbage. Okay, I managed to find uh, possibly the only uh, hardenable steel in my shop, which is like a silver steel. It's like O2 or O1 or W1, whatever. We're going to quench it in water. <laughs> I'm guessing that the glass cutters need to be extremely sharp, but I actually have no idea. I don't know if this is going to work. Well, I do know because uh, I'm uh, recording this voice over after I've made everything, but uh, let's just see if that works. Like really nothing? What's the difference? So apparently hardened steel doesn't cut it. By the looks of it, the real glass cutter seems to be like carbide or something like that. Anyway, the blades are kind of like consumables. So why not uh, just do that? Just make a holder to, to hold real um, replaceable blades. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let me think about it. I'm thinking the real glass cutters are very, very tiny. I cannot put a screw through. Well, I could, but uh, I think it would be a problem. So I'm going to make a tiny, tiny pin that will hold the blades in place. I'm gonna cut the tip. Oh my God, that sounds terrible. <laughs> but uh, we'll do a little circumcision, which will screw together in a way that will not obscure the glass cutters. And uh, Bob's your uncle, I, sh I should say. Okay, the screw also captures the pin from going out. Look. Yeah, I think that will work. So the next step is is to make the body of the body of the
If you happen to see my last video, you might be a little confused as to why I have a 3D printer. So uh, as it turns out, this video was recorded before the last one. So I still had a 3D printer. This was the first time I'm using it. So yeah, uh, unfortunately, this 3D printer is going away to one of my Patreons because I, uh, I couldn't deal with this shenanigans any longer. But uh, watch the last video if you want to know why. Whoop. Oh, no, 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 no. Whoop. No, no, no. Throughout my entire time uh, looking online how to print the 3D prints, uh, everybody does really cool time lapses of the actual thing they're printing, but unfortunately <laughs> my prints are very, very tiny and flat. So, But uh, there we go, the printing is finished and I just need to clean them from all the residue and cure them in the curing station. It only took about uh, 16 times for me to figure out how to use this printer. I think the most useful thing that I've used is this uh, heater because it's pretty cold in here. And apparently resin uh, is very particular when it comes to temperature. So I will save you the headache. But the next thing is to prepare for casting. Since I want to cast it in metal, more specifically tin, I'm going to use this high temperature silicon, which is red in this case. And I'm just getting out all the babbles. I'm only going to cast one side since the other side is going to be flat. And I can just flatten it later on the belt sander or something like that. And everything is left is just to melt the tin. I'm going to use an induction since it's handy, I suppose. And I don't use it for any cooking anymore. Oh my God, that was terrible. <laughs> and unfortunately, just pouring it like that didn't work so well. So I tried a little weight to make it flat and maybe squeeze the metal into the crevices. But no, that uh, didn't work. So, <coughs> so that was a total failure. And uh, yeah, <laughs> after printing millions of these, uh, 3D modeling the entire thing for days, Printing for days, casting, silicon waiting. Um, this was a to total failure and uh, this stuff happens. And uh, yeah, what I should have done uh, from the beginning was just a good old fashioned engraving. Yeah, let's do that. There's a little horse because it looks pretty. And then there is like this, which is, looks kind of weird. I'll show you here. Uh, it's the mirrored, but whatever. Here's there's like stone, <laughs> I guess. And from the stone comes out a glass clay that is cracked because the horse is kind of cracking it, maybe. Uh, it's all very figurative and storytelling. <laughs> anyway. Every time I engrave something new, I try to learn a few other things and maybe to improve on my engraving since I'm not a professional master engraver, as you might say. In this case, I wanted to make it a bit more poppy, so I tried to remove as much background as I could. Aside from that, I want to make the figures of the engraving, like the horse and the plate, to be more uh, outstanding and uh, separated from the scroll work, so the glass monolith looking thing is going to be inlaid as a separate piece and for the horse and the pigeon in the other side i might try a different color or something like that Probably it's not a good idea, but I've decided I want to nickel plate this thing, which might be problematic because I've already glued the wood and polished it. 
<laughs> I want to give it a go. Um, I have the Electrolyte. I could have made my own, but I think uh, the commercial ones are brighter. I don't know if it's a thing, but they might be like to produce nicer results and probably will cost about the same as making it on my own. Um, I have a power supply. Yes. I have the bath. Uh, uh, alligators and uh, we need to mask the wood no, uh, let's do it just like that Now we're gonna let it oxidize a bit so it gets a little darker and nice contrasty. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty good, I think, Pip. Okay, my friends, we just need to make some screws and hardware. We are ready to go. Give it a little. <laughs> My God. Uh, yeah, that looks pretty. That looks alright. Actually, I. It looks like I don't need to do so many cuts. There we go. Slick. Now for the real, the real deal. Took this. Yeah, other way around. All around me are a million pieces. So unfortunately, I'm out of glass plates and I don't want to waste any more. So I'm going to try a few tiny pieces to see if I can get any sort of uh, good cuts, I suppose. I'm not going to do it with a hammer, I guess. It's not the right way. So let's just try and break it like uh, a normal human being. Also, I don't know if this glass is tempered in such a way that doesn't crack so easily. I don't know. I am also a not glass cutter, so give me a break, well, don't you? So my friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, this is actually a commission. Someone bought it so it's gonna be sent to him I'm not gonna have it anymore but yeah see you in the next video hey guys uh, if you stay this long in the video and uh, first of all thank you your um, I love you <laughs> I also want to mention that Maker Central is coming soon and uh, I really hope to see you there uh, so if you do use I have an affiliate link in the description uh, yeah <laughs>
Use that if you want and uh, say hi and we'll have some coffee. Woo-ho!